Researchers want to build models that generalize, and the field of neural combinatorial optimization is no different. In this field, you want to learn how to solve combinatorial optimization problems. For example, you want to predict the optimal route over a given graph. Neural combinatorial solvers that could generalize to larger problem instances or across domains would have a big advantage over traditional solvers with long runtimes and application-specific heuristics. However, we often use the same data generator for training and evaluation. This evaluation may give us a too optimistic estimate of the model's generalization abilities. In this work, we propose a more realistic way to measure generalization with adversarial attacks. My name is Johanna Sommer, and together with Simon Geisler, we will be presenting our paper, Generalization of Neural Combinatorial Solvers Through the Lens of Adversarial Robustness. Finding an adversarial example means looking for a perturbed problem instance that maximizes a given loss. In the case of TSP, you're looking for a perturbed graph that maximizes the difference between the ground truth root and the predicted root. You can do this, for example, by adding a node to the graph. However, as you can see in the right figure, adding a node to the graph also changes the ground truth root. Relying on a traditional solver to obtain the new root is infeasible. Instead, we propose constraints on the adversarial points, such that we know in advance what the ground truth root over the perturbed graph will look like. This is in stark contrast to the image domain, where we rely on a sufficiently small perturbation to ensure that the label has not changed. Hello, I'm Simon Geisler, and I will now explain how we construct our attacks such that we can determine the updated solution efficiently. For this, let us resort again to the previous example. First, we choose two nodes P and Q that are neighbors in the original problem instance X. Second, we insert an additional node C such that the route PCQ is the smallest among all possible pairs of nodes in the original problem instance. In this example, this corresponds to the constraint that C lies within the orange area. This way, we know the optimal solution remains the same except for the detour PCQ. Then we then use a variant of projected gradient descent to optimize over node C's column. Using the construction of multiple times, we can insert multiple nodes. In our paper, we also detail how adding multiple nodes can be parallelized. Another combinatorial optimization problem that we study is the SAT decision problem. In this task, the neural combinatorial solver predicts if an expression is satisfiable. I now explain how we construct a perturbed instance that remains satisfiable. For this, we assume to know a truth assignment, namely a possible solution of literal values such that the expression re resolves to true. We can then freely insert or remove literals as long as one of the literals of the truth assignment remains in each clause. In the graph representation for such a SAT problem, as it is commonly used by neural combinatorial solvers, this corresponds to an optimization problem of the binary entries in the adjacency matrix. For unsatisfiable problems, I do refer to our paper. Next, I will give some insights from our empirical evaluation for the SAT decision problem. Here we show the accuracy for satisfiable problem instances with the NeuroSAT solver. If you perturb only 0.5% of the literals, we already push the accuracy from 80% to below 50%. Or in other words, the model performs worse than a coin flip. On the right, we show how the accuracy drops over the number of attack steps or gradient updates. If we alter 5% of the literals, already a single gradient update suffices to push the accuracy below 30%. Hence, finding these hard model-specific instances is rather cheap. This is in stark contrast to random perturbations of the problem instance, where we hardly find such challenging model-specific problems. Okay, so let me recap. In contrast to other domains in FSA robustness for combinatorial optimization, we can obtain the true label of a perturbed instance and do not rely on subjective uh, proxies such as unnoticeable. We propose such sound perturbation models for TSP and SAT that are also efficient. Even though I've only presented the results for SAT, the evaluated TSP solvers are also very fragile with respect to small perturbations of the problem instance. As stated in the beginning, we actually decided to generalize the problem instances of different domains or larger size. However, we are most likely not there yet. Nevertheless, adversarial robustness comes with a promising and challenging evaluation procedure on the path towards true generalization. Having said this, I encourage you to check out our paper and visit us at a poster session. Thank you.